So on to our first award. The Christian Gauss Award is the oldest of the three book awards. Established by the Phi Beta Kappa Senate in 1950 to recognize outstanding books in the field of literary scholarship or criticism. The award is named for the late Christian Gauss, the distinguished Princeton University scholar, teacher, and dean, who also served as a senator and the president of Phi Beta Kappa. The award will be presented this evening by Regina James. Regina is a member of the Gauss Committee and a professor of English at Skidmore College. Regina? surprising response 
a certain kinship, I feel, with the distinguished American actress Ruth Gordon, who won an Academy Award in 1968. You may remember her from Harold and Moore, an absolutely delightful film. Though she was 72 years old at the time of the award ceremony and had been in show business for 50 years, she thanked the Academy with these words, I can't tell you how encouraging this is. <laughs> that brought down the house. It seemed to be a terrific show back then, but I understand it differently now. She meant it. For age, one discovers, can feel as vulnerable as youth, as unsure that it has any continuing claim to public attention, and fully as grateful for any supportive word. The Christian cause arrived, the award is such a word in its chances. And that's a very good thing if, like me, you're working hard to finish two more long books before the final bell. My ongoing interest has been in the intersection between literary and visual culture in the Middle Ages, a period, as most of you will know, when the vast majority of people could not read at all. Literature was more often heard in company than read in solitude, even by the literate. They preferred to hear it, they had a choice. Readers and listeners alike were encouraged to imagine visually, to see in the mind's eye, as the expression had it, the landscape, the architecture, the costumes and actions that figure most significantly in a poem. My goal has been to reconstruct the visual context most relevant for such images in Chaucer's poems and tales, on Tale of the Time, as a guide to their literary art and meaning. I call them governing images because they furnish Chaucer a way to explore within a fiction the received truths of his culture, to ground his art in the wisdom of his age. But my larger goal, I suppose, has been to keep this part of the medieval past alive as part of our own cultural patrimony, part of what we inherit in the human, which literature records in especially vivid ways. I sometimes describe my work as presenting Chaucer among the commonplaces that play with the great meaning-bearing images foundational to much of medieval culture, whether they are religious or secular, philosophic or folkloric. These commonplaces, in terms of visual arts, iconographic in nature, emerge refreshed and renewed from Chaucer's pen. They never remain merely common in Chaucer's hands. Today, it's been suggested to me convincingly, I think, that we might call them beams, and if you have to look that up, join the club. <laughs> but enough of that. This is a moment in which to say thank you, not only to Phi Beta Kappa and the awards committee and Regina for that lovely introduction, all those who chose to honor my book in this way, but it's also a moment in which I get to honor, I wish, the late Ruth Wallerstein, first taught me English literature at the University of Wisconsin in a year-long sophomore survey that quite literally changed my life. Those days, the early 50s, were not easy times for women in the academy, but Wisconsin had three dazzling tenured women professors who ran the place in some ways that they were stunning. Ruth Wallerstein, early tenured, fiercely intellectual, aristocratic woman with hands like a pair of glasses, showed me it was possible over the course of that year to think with learning and passion about literary texts that was coming to love. And so I changed my major from sort of pre-forum service to English, studied with her in several more courses, and with her support, 
one, the scholarship to Oxford that even more profoundly changed my life, made me a medievalist. You can imagine, therefore, perhaps, what it meant to me when I first learned that the first Christian Gauze Prize ever awarded went to Ruth Wallerstein. A book is called 17, Studies in 17th Century Poetic. That was in 1951. I first studied with her in 1952. I called it Karma or a Circle Closing, but I think she would be welcome. I thank you once again for the honor.